let's go into the, th the next area, which of course I believe is a, probably one of the more important areas, and that is the heat exchangers themselves. The heat exchanger, of course, is, uh, uh, is very much involved in uh, being able to protect that particular heat exchanger. Let's look at if a, you're in a refinery, chemical plant, uh, or you use mild steel tube heat exchangers. Uh, we have seen where corrosion and rust deposits have occurred within a very short period of time when a new one has been started up. Why has that occurred? It's because it did not receive the initial high-level corrosion inhibitor treatment and maybe even some cleaning action at the same time. So the key here for new heat exchangers, particularly mild steel, is to clean with a, either hydroblast or chemical cleaning if, uh, if you need that, if it's got a lot of deposit, but if, but if it's very new, maybe just a surfactant might be utilized to be able to utilize, to do any cleaning of oil, greases, and what have you that's due to fabrication, then use a high rapid uh, passivation treatment, high dosage level of phosphate, usually in the neighborhood of 60 parts per million for the entire cooling water system to carry that for about a week and then you can actually protect that particular equipment, establishing a good protection on the metal surfaces. Here's a good example of somebody that didn't do that and we have a lot of corrosion product build up on the tube sheet as well as the tubes, and the tubes in this case are carbon steel. If you clean that off, of course, you can see underneath we've had a lot of, of uh, good, good pitting attack that's occurred in probably in the tubes as well as the tube sheet. However, you've got to remember that if, if you actually, going back to the deposits here, if you go back to that particular deposit and you say, well, I'm going to add a corrosion inhibitor now to be able to get to the metal surface. Well, how can the corrosion inhibitor get to the metal surface if it's got such a barrier such as this on, on the surface? It can't. And a key of this is remember that you're using the water from the cooling tower system to carry the inhibitors to the areas you want protected. If you have a barrier such as all this corrosion product, it will never get to the metal surface. So you could even make it worse by adding, say, a phosphate treatment program that you might have in this uh, in this condition on that deposit. So keep in mind you need to be able to passivate this type of thing. What we like to do on a brand new heat exchanger that's made of carbon steel tubing, uh, you need to be able to come up with a slight, remove the oils and greases with the cleaner and then use a mild steel passivation. And if you have an isolated bundle where you can actually isolate it from the entire cooling water system, you can do this very rapidly. Uh, we have done that with a, a a solution of one and a half percent, one and a half percent phosphate and cleaner for two to four hours at 120, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and, and it does an excellent job, and it's done it within two to four hours. It's going to take a while to get it set up, etc., to do this, but you can do this easily with a, with a 10 to 12 hour day. Now, if it's if the bundle is not isolated, then you have to go up with a higher dosage of phosphate throughout the entire cooling water system. As I said earlier, 60 parts per million, or some people work in a 40 to 60 ppm of phosphate using an ambient temperatures. You have to have at least for 48 hours to be able to establish the protection on that particular surface. Now, those are my, that's mild steel.